Okay, we're on to the last chapter of Applied Year One, also the last chapter of Mechanics AS, and it is variable acceleration. And it's all just on this one page because I've been able to design a question that kind of covers each part of the exercises that we have here. So for variable acceleration, we actually go about using differentiation and integration. As we know, we use the SUVAT formulae for constant acceleration. So my quick way of remembering which ones we need to differentiate or integrate is I start off by writing the letters of SUVAT that we would use. So S for displacement, V for final velocity or just velocity in this case, and A for acceleration. And as we go down this list, when you go down the list to go from one to the next you simply differentiate differentiate and you obviously differentiate here with respect to time differentiate with respect to time like this okay because these are going to be functions of time and this means that if you want to go up the list then you are going to integrate and again you're going to integrate with respect to t so we're going to be having that dt that we've got here. In fact, so that doesn't kind of confuse us. Let's just say we're going to differentiate like this and we're going to integrate like this. So differentiate down, integrate goes up. And then also sketching the graph can help you reason more carefully within a question if there's any kind of like weird parts to it. And lastly, if a velocity time graph dips below the x-axis, the positive and negative areas must be considered separately to find the distance traveled. We know that if a graph goes below the x-axis, then the area would be negative, And we just want to avoid that when we're doing these kinds of questions. And it's quite a popular thing that they ask about. So we're looking at functions of time. And we're doing differentiation and integration for this variable acceleration. So let's read through. It says a fixed point O lies on a straight line. A particle P moves along the straight line such that at time t seconds with t greater than or equal to zero, after passing through O, the velocity of P, V meters per second, is modeled as this. In other words, this is the velocity of the particle. And the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to find the times when it is at instantaneous rest. So we're just going to translate what it means to be at rest. That just means that the velocity is zero. So nice and easy for the first part of the question. We're just saying that V is equal to zero. In other words, zero is equal to a 20th of T cubed minus 8T squared plus 15T. And we just need to solve that. Now, you can get rid of the 1 over 20. If you want to, you could just put this straight on the calculator. But I'm going to go a bit old school. I'm going to factorize. I'm going to divide by the 1 over 20, and then I'm going to factorize out the t. So we get t squared minus 8t plus 15. And when I factorize that double bracket, I get a t minus 3 and a t minus 5 as well for this part. So the solutions that we have are going to be that t is either equal to 0, t is equal to 3, or t is equal to 5. So we've got those three different times when it's instantaneous rest. Of course, you could have just put this thing on your calculator and it would give you the values straight away as well. Now, that's going to be quite useful for later on in the question because we now know that it's a cubic kind of graph and it's crossing at 0, 3, and 5, and it's a positive cubic. So even if I was just going to do a bit of a sketch here that might help us think about what's going on, it's crossing at 0, 3, and 5. Very, very rough. It's positive cubic, which means it's going to be coming from down here. And it's going to go up and then down and then down and then up. Wow, that is one of the most terrible graphs I've ever drawn. Let's see if I can make it look a little bit neater. So that's the shape of the graph that we're talking about with 0, 3, and 5 here. Find the magnitude of the acceleration when t is equal to 1. So this means we're going to go to find out what the acceleration is. So that means to differentiate. OK, let's take that expression for v, which is 1 over 20 t cubed minus 8t squared plus 15t, and we'll differentiate it and go straight to what the acceleration is. So I can leave that 1 over 20 there, and then I can just differentiate everything in the brackets so that I get 3t squared minus 16t plus 15, and we're going to substitute in that t is equal to 1 to find out what the acceleration is. So it's going to be 1 over 20. It's going to be 3 times 1 minus 16 times 1 plus 15. So what's that in the bracket? 3 plus 15, that's 18 minus 16, that's 2. 2 divided by 20 is the same as 1 divided by 10, which is the same as 0 0.1. So it is 0 0.1 meters per second squared for this part.
Okay, it then wants us to find the maximum speed of p in the interval between 0 and 3. And this is actually where the graph is really useful because we're now actually going to try and find out what is that maximum speed. Remember, this graph that we have here is time and velocity. So there's a couple of ways of thinking about this. We're wanting to find the turning point on the velocity graph. We know that turning points can be found by doing differentiation, which we've actually already done over here. Or we could say that the maximum speed is when the acceleration is zero, because if the acceleration is zero, it means that it's already done as much speeding up as it can do. And when the acceleration is zero, it is no longer adding any more speed to it. But you can think of it as the graph. I'm actually going to be saying when the, di uh, the differentiated part that we've got is equal to zero at that point. So we can now say either the acceleration is equal to zero or dv dt is equal to zero, thinking of it as the graph. And this thing here is dv dt. So we get that 1 over 20, 3t squared minus 16t plus 15 is equal to zero. I'm just going to ignore that 1 over 20, and then I'm going to go straight to my calculator. I'm not going to try and factorize this one because I don't think it is going to factorize. And I will just solve this on the equation solver. So I'll put my coefficients as 3 minus 16 and 15. And we get two different values. Okay, We get one of the values for t is uh, 4.119 something something. And the other one is 1.2137 something like that. Okay. 1.2137. Now it's just said that it's for this part between 0 and 3. So this one is actually referring to this speed that we have down here. We're actually going to be wanting to use that one because it's in the interval between 0 and 3. So using that value, and actually if you do want the exact value, the exact value of this from my calculator is 8 minus the square root of 19 over 3. I actually need to find out what the speed is, so I'm going to substitute that back into the velocity expression. So that then means that my v is equal to, right, let's put 8 minus the square root of 19 over 3. And I'm literally just going to substitute it into this expression. So that's 1 over 20. And I'm going to do my answer cubed minus 8 answer squared plus 15 answer. And we get, it takes a long time on my calculator to do that, that to three significant figures, I've got 0 0.410 meters per second and that is to three significant figures for this part so that was literally just substituting that value of t back into it and then the last part of this question is we are going to find the total distance traveled by p in the interval between zero and five so between zero and five we are going to need to find out the area of this part and we're going to need to find out the area of this part. And this is exactly why I've written this about the positive and negative areas that we've got here. So we'll do the purple part as positive. This is going to be negative, so we'll need to negate that answer to find out that distance that is travelled there. And obviously, um, when you integrate, that's going to give you the distance because of this idea that we're going from velocity. We're trying to find out what the distance travelled is. So going from velocity to displacement or distance is obviously going up with a bit of integration that we have here. So for the purple part, we are going to be integrating between 0 and 3, the velocity, which is 1 over 20 t cubed minus 8t squared plus 15t with respect to t. I'll tell you what, we'll just go straight in with doing this. Now I'm going to put that 1 over 20 almost just straight out to the front like that. Okay, so I'm actually just going to integrate the normal part, but I'll put the 1 over 20 outside the front. And when I integrate t cubed... I get a quarter t to the 4. When I integrate minus 8t squared, well, it would be a t cubed, and that would be a minus 8 over 3t cubed. And the 15t is going to go to a 15t squared over 2. So it'll be 15 over 2t squared. Now, in a normal one, you'd want to show all of the substitution with the 3 and with the zero going into this, showing the substitution. But in mechanics, I don't think from Mark schemes, they're that fussy about doing this. So I'm just going to substitute in the three and the zero, do it on my calculator. In fact, I might do something very sneaky. I might just use the integration mode on my calculator, and you probably wouldn't want to do this typically. But it's quite good for checking an answer. So bear with me while I just very quickly type in this thing. I've got the method mark for doing this. It's just one accuracy mark for getting the right answer for this part. So let me just type this in on my calculator. And I'm going to let the calculator do the hard work. You shouldn't normally do this, but in the interest of this video not being too long, I'm going to see if I can do that here. So I'm just going to make sure my limits are correct as well. 
So zero and three. When you do all of that, you should end up with the answer 63 over 80. Now the green part is between three and five, and that's one over 20 t cubed minus eight t squared plus 15 t with respect to t. Now we know it's gonna be the same part of integration as the previous one, so I don't even need to consider that. It's just gonna be my quarter teeth power of four. I wonder if I can squeeze this all in. Quarter teeth power of four minus eight over three t cubed plus 15 over two t squared. And the limits this time are gonna be between three and five. And we should expect that answer is gonna be negative because it is below the axis. So I'm gonna be very sneaky, just change the limits on my calculator. I always feel like that should be easier than it is. So what's that between three and five? And it is negative, it's minus four over 15. So this means that the distance travels if I just kind of box off that area, is therefore 63 over 80. And you could either have like subtracted this so it would have become a positive, or we can just ignore the negative sign and just add it. So we get 63 over 80 plus four over, over 15. And that is 253 over 240, which to three significant figures is 1.05 meters. This is pretty much everything that was needed in this question, in this topic, all in this one question that we've got here. We had the differentiation to go from the velocity to the acceleration. We then did some kind of further investigation with that to find this maximum speed that we had over here. And then we had something to do with distance, displacement. That meant we were going from the velocity expression. We wanted to go up to that part. So that was definitely going to be an integrate that we had there. And we were careful of that negative area. Using the graph makes this question much, much easier to think what's going on. So that is all of a Applied year one done. I'm going to start moving on to applied year two stuff. And I hope to see you in another one of my videos very soon.